We're going to talk about the try files directive in Nginx. You may think you know what this does and it's used a lot, but it has some surprising behavior. Now, two things I want to cover before we talk about what try files does exactly. The first thing is what is the URI? So the URI pretty simply is anything after the host name, after the host name in port. So we have a backslash here of the home page. That's a URI of backslash. Slash foo is a URI of slash foo. Slash foo slash bar is a URI of slash foo slash bar, right? Same thing for any static files. The URI here is slash app.js. Great. So that's thing number one. The second thing is that any URI here is going to be given to Nginx to uh, serve relative to the root directory. So if it's trying to find a file named app.js, it's going to try to find it in var dub html public. If the URI is slash foo slash bar, it's going to try to find a file in var dub html public slash foo slash bar. OK, so with that in mind, let's see what try files does. So try files is doing three things here. It's going to try to match the URI exactly, and it's going to try to find that as a file on the server. If it does not find a file on the server, it's going to treat it as a directory, which is what the trailing slash here does. If the um, directory exists, then it's going to try to serve a file out of that directory. If it does not exist, it's going to pass off to slash index.php, right? So one use case here is the slash app.js file, which serves a JavaScript file. That is because it saw the URI of slash app.js. It saw that vardo.html public app.js existed. And it served it because it saw that was a static file that exists. If I go to uh, slash foo or slash foo bar, then it's going to try to find that as a directory in here. Now, if the directory exists, Nginx does not know what file to serve, right? It still only knows that there's a directory. So then it goes to the index directive and tries to match one of the three files we have up here. You can add your own as well, right? Anything could be here. But Nginx is going to try to find in the directory given. Uh, index.html or index.htm or index.php. If either, any of these three are found in the order, right, it's going to go by whatever file it finds first, then it's going to serve that file. Lastly, if no file exists, right, so if file doesn't exist as given, a directory does not exist as given, then it's going to fall back to slash index.php, appending any query string that might happen to be there. OK, so that's the basics of try files, but there's a little bit more to it. The uh, file that exists exactly as given as the URI is the obvious case, serve it or don't serve it. The directory is a little more complicated because either um, there's a directory and a file that exists, or if it's just a directory, then it tries to find the index file. If the index file given is index.php or uh, the URI given does not match a file or a directory, then it's going to be index.php as well. Right? So there's two cases here where it ends up being index.php. Now, when it falls back to index.php in either of those cases, then Nginx knows to pass that off to PHP FBM to then get served by our Laravel application thanks to this location block. So after try files for this uh, root location block, which matches any URI, um, if try files matches a file that exists, then it's going to try to find other location blocks that might also handle that file. So files ending in .php end up in this location block, in which case it passes the request off to PHP FBM, which ends up in our Laravel application. If the location block ends in, um, oh, I'm sorry, if the URI ends in .css or CSS.map or JavaScript or JPEG, blah, 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 all those other static files, then it gets served out of this location block, which sets an expiration header of seven days and decides not to log a not found or uh, any access log for these requests at all, because that just kind of blows up your access log for no reason. OK, so let's see what, uh, some examples of that. The first thing, right, I'm on the home page of my Laravel app. The URI is just a backslash. It's a backslash, um, which matches not an exact file, but it matches a directory of fardo.html public. Inside of that directory is index.php. Therefore, it ends up at this location block and gets served as a file. Or I'm sorry, served as the Laravel app. If we have a slash app.js, that gets served as a JavaScript file because the URI matches exactly. The uh, URI ends in .js, so we end up down here, which searches for a .js file. And then you know it gets an expiration header of seven days and no access log and all that good stuff. If I go to slash foo or slash foo bar or anything like that, that does not exist as a file. It does not exist as a directory. So it goes to the fallback of index.php. Therefore, uh, that gets passed down to here. So it gets served by our Laravel application in the end, which is why our 404 page here is a Laravel 404 page. It's not the Nginx default 404 page, right? Laravel is actually serving this request, seeing that foobar slash foobar 
doesn't match any registered routes in the Laravel application and therefore it returns a not found error. Okay, so that is how try files works. Just like a lot of Nginx, it's simple in theory, but it gets complicated in the details, right? We have an interaction of try files with the root directory. We have the try files with a directory it's trying to find that interacts with the index directive. And then even after it matches a file, it's going to try to find other location blocks that matches the, uh, the file found, the file being served as well, right? So index.php ends up matching this location block in our static assets, JavaScript, images, CSS, all that stuff ends up matching this location block. Now, if the file doesn't match any location block, then Nginx does its best to serve it anyway with the correct uh, content type headers based on some other configuration that's elsewhere in Nginx's configuration. If it doesn't recognize it, it's either not going to serve it or it's going to serve it as a plain text file. So it's a simple directive with a lot going on behind it, but it's very handy.